There's nothing better than having fresh fruits and vegetables from your garden. Um, however, we have a dog and it's hard to exclude dogs from your garden. So what we're going to do is make some planter boxes. These are the tools that you're going to need to complete this project. First of all, you need wood. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of the wood that I got, but really you can make it however you want, um, whatever dimensions you want, and so just go find wood. <laughs> uh, then you need a miter saw or something else to cut with. You can use a reciprocating saw, um, a hand saw, whatever it is you have. You need a drill. Um, you're going to use the drill to put the screws in. These are exterior screws. You'll need a pencil, some newspaper, wood glue, uh, measuring tape, a little bit of rope. Uh, you'll see the reason for that later. And then you will also need some dirt. First of all, you want to decide what your dimensions should be. So I used some nice rope and just kind of made a rough outline of what my planter box would look like if it were five feet by three feet. Um, it's a little smaller than I imagined, but I think I might like it. And this is another option. This would be six feet by two feet. I actually kind of like this one. And last of all, this is kind of what a four foot by four foot would look like. And I really don't like that. I think I'm gonna go with the six foot by two foot for these planter boxes. Cause I felt like it worked really well. After you've decided on your desired dimensions, um, you just need to mark the wood where you want to cut it. So this is definitely the biggest and heaviest piece of wood I've cut on our miter saw. Uh, this miter saw, saw is from Harbor Freight and we have been super impressed with it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get um, it lined up roughly in place. Don't clamp it down until you know that you're in the exact right place. There's my line. About right there, should be good. So what I'm gonna do is you just kind of turn on the saw that's not plugged in. Okay, now that it's roughly lined up, I'm going to turn on the saw. And so you see the red laser. Um, I know that I am a little bit off, so I need to move it a bit more. So now if you look, the laser is right on our pencil marking. Which means we're ready to cut. So first of all, make sure that you clamp, um, clamp your wood down really well. It's important for safety, for accuracy. So just keep on spinning until it's nice and tight. Right there. Pretty good. Okay. And so now, just going to turn on the miter saw. So one six foot piece and one two foot piece. Uh, one thing that's important about this saw, which took me a while to learn, is that it has this safety pin. 
if you try just pulling it out, then it's not going to work. You have to push down so that it releases and then you can change it into its upward position and then it will go up. All right, now that we have all the wood cut, we're ready to assemble. So these screws, um, I got them from Lowe's, but they do say that they're exterior screws. Uh, they're more resistant to rust. So I would suggest getting exterior screws since these are going to be out. Okay, so first of all, these have kind of a weird tip. So you need to, um, you need to put on a different type of uh, screw bit. But this one actually came with this screw bit, so I don't have to worry about searching through my toolbox for it. Uh, make sure it is perfectly lined up. And make sure you got long enough screws. So these ones are 4 inches. Uh, this wood is 2 inches wide. So I had grabbed some 3 inch ones, and then I decided I might as well go with 4. Now we have one corner done. So now, just to get to the other one. So now I'm just going to put them in all of the corners. So I'm doing two per corner. Okay, our next step is going to be to apply some glue. And this is 10 inches tall. If this is tall enough for you, then you have two planner boxes. I want mine to be double. And so I'm going to just put some wood glue on and then we'll stack them the cap off because it was coming out way too slow. So I'm putting on a generous amount of wood glue. So we finished our glue. Now we're going to get our helper and make them do all the work. So we're just going to stack this one on top of the one that we already placed. The nice thing is gravity is working with us. So, this should just set nicely with the wood glue. And we have a simple planter box. When I was looking online for boxes, they were all super fancy and I just wanted something kind of practical. <laughs> so this is really simple and practical. Um, we're planning on restaining our deck soon. And so, uh, maybe we'll use some of the stain only on the outside. If you put any stain or anything on the inside, um, then you can't really eat any of the food that comes from it. Now we just need to fill our planter box with dirt and we're done. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to do it tomorrow before my son wakes up. Good morning. Um, Today we're going to finish up the planner box. So you can see I have some newspaper. 
Uh, this is actually a really good trick if you want to prevent weeds and things like that. Um, newspaper or cardboard actually works really well too. Um, and so I'm just going to lay this down at the bottom of the planner box. Uh, that's another good benefit of doing planner boxes is that you end up with less with less weeds. Um, everyone knows that's the worst part of gardening is pulling weeds. Planting is fun, but no one wants to pull weeds. So there we go. That's about half of it. Actually, another cool tip, um, if you have grass that you want to get rid of, you can lay down cardboard in the fall, um, which is nice because it leaves a nice straight line, right? And so you just lay down some cardboard in the fall, leave it all winter, especially if you live in an area that snows, then it will snow on top of it, and voila! You won't have grass. Um, come, come spring. All right, so there we go. Okay, any other DIYers have cars? <laughs> it's not the most convenient for when you make trips to Lowe's and things. And um, I found some dirt for free on an um, on an app I have called Nextdoor, and so I loaded up my trunk with it. Just put down a tarp and so now we're going to put some dirt in our planter box. Alright, so here we go filling it with dirt. Um, it definitely, I definitely underestimated, underestimated how much dirt this would need. I was hoping to fill it halfway with the load that I took from the car, but yeah, I'm not even close. <laughs> so, I may need a few more loads. My plan is, I don't know, this looks like it's going to be pretty good, but I think I'll probably get some potting soil. Um, I'll fill it up most of the way with this, and then maybe four to six inches of potting soil. Okay, so here I put in some dirt that I got for free. Um, so I'm Cut a, cut a tree out of their lawn. And so it's really kind of a mixture of mulch and dirt. And so I decided to get some potting soil to put on top of it. So I got this at Lowe's. I got five bags of it, so it was on a shelf. Five for $10. So hopefully it'll be enough. And then potting soil is better for the plant. Um, right, this is miracle Grow, and it actually has and fertilizers to help the plants grow. in the most shallow spots, probably more like six inches all the way across. And so, just making this look nice and even. Um, this potting soil is for multi-purpose, so you can plant, um, you can plant vegetables or flowers, whatever. There are some potting soils that are more specifically for flowers or vegetables. And so I'll just get whatever potting soil works best for you. And you have a planter box. Bye bye.
hopefully you like today's video. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe. You can also comment on any other type of DIY project that you would like to see done. Um, stay tuned for planting fruit trees, um, grape plants, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, see you later.